Okay, so don't mind my shirt on my hair. I was taking it down because as y'all know, it needed to be taken down. But this is part two to me testing. And what I realized was, of course, like I said, I am maybe going to try a different wig. But, and I'm going to try my different sense or whatever. But I realized because my, my kind of does have a hot throw. And doing some research, and like I told y'all from the other video that I had watched of uh, from Black Tie Born, um, remember how I said that a certain type of jar is for a certain type of room. So I shouldn't be expecting a big hot throw and whatnot because it's a smaller jar and it's only single wicked. And with a smaller jar, you could probably only single wick it anyway until it's like maybe 3.5 inches in, in width. And mine is in that, mine is like 3.14 give or take three so maybe at 3.2 maybe 3.5 maybe i could try double wiggling it like i had a comment of somebody suggested and which i thought about it but i was like i told them they didn't come back but i said that i don't know i feel like my jar is kind of too small and i'm kind of scared to double wick it and also with the website it doesn't recommend two wicks so like others like say if you want to use one wick uh, with, with other waxes and stuff or like jars in general it says if you want double wicked you could do, use this two or if you want a single wicked you can use this one but with mine they only recommend one so I wouldn't even know where to start with how to which one to double wick with and it could be the um the wick I don't know but regardless I do still smell it um they also said something about the air in which I have a vent in my room and it's like it comes down right there and as soon as it come on i can't smell the candle anymore so i have tried in bathrooms and which is beautiful but i haven't tried this one in the bathrooms but i tried my other wax in bathrooms and it's nice so um and on memory box candle Co. site i know that she sells a small candle so it's double wick though but she sells smaller candles so i was thinking like let me look on her site and see what she recommends and her says <clears throat> bedrooms bathrooms and small living areas so i can do that because it is a small candle so you can smell it but don't expect a very strong throat like i wasn't giving enough credit for it to be as small as it was i was expecting something big and bright when that's just kind of unrealistic so i think and, I, and i'm also new to it so i think i was just being a, a bit unrealistic and my goal was a bit too high from what i expected so maybe when i try like bigger jars and um more wicks then of course i'll get the smell that i'm looking for but right now with a small single wick jar i'm probably not gonna get that so it's good for my bed i smell it in my bedroom I smell it in the bathroom and whatnot so i could go along with it because you do still smell it so i can go with it and just advertise it for um bedrooms bathrooms and possibly small um small areas and whatnot so they don't expect if you put it in my if i put it in my big matching kitchen or if i put it in my big living room in my house i'll smell it throughout the house no it's not that it's not a big enough candle which is why like some people when they go to bath and body where they get three wick candles so and uh, it's a single wick candle but yeah that's why i probably don't candle cost some other people be complaining about them candle prices but that's a whole other thing but yeah so i think i'm gonna take the initiative i'm gonna test my other scents out maybe at different um fragrance percentages and then I'm going to sell them. I'm my, probably going to start selling them because it's not like I don't smell anything. And like I said, I was being unrealistic. So I'm probably going to sell them, start selling them and tell people, ex, you know, don't expect too much from a small single wick candle. And I put my, and so thank God I did bring my price down. And doing research, I saw a member by I know that she sells a 10. It's double wigged, but she still sells a 10. And when I look on there, she says of 18. I'm selling mine for 18. But hers is 6 ounces and mine is 7. So I think I'm around a good general price for um, what I'm selling. Plus mine is a a matte, a matte um, black jar, glass jar with a cork lid. So I think mine is, is a bit more, can be sold for a bit more and whatnot. I think it's a bit more valuable than a 10. Um, but think about it, it's hers is double wicked. And people prefer soy nowadays, even though it's just a myth of, of the candle industry and whatnot. So, but it is double wicked. She uses soy wax and I don't know her hot throw. But regardless, I know that my jar and my cork uh, lid idea and whatnot is beautiful. It's costly. I'm sure it costs more than a lot of people's uh, jars. Even though mine, would, would, it would cost more if I got it from the U.S., but it costs less because 
of where I get mine from. But it's still valuable because it's expensive for, even for me to get because most jars can be like a dollar and whatnot. But mine is like two, possibly going on three. So mine, it was a good price, but they did charge me more, of course, because of the court lid. But yeah, like I was saying, so I think a matte black jar, glass jar, and a cork lid is more valuable than a tin. Not to knock hers or anything. I'm just trying to, you know, do <laughs> look at my hair, market research and whatnot. So yeah, it's not to knock her or anything because I'm sure her kind of formulation is much better because she's been in the game for a while. But yeah, I was just trying to see about my pricing and if I can, and if I can start, if I should start selling and whatnot because I don't have this big hot though like I was expecting. But I shouldn't have expected much from it. So if y'all are up and coming, do as much research as you can and just know that if you're not double wicking um, or using a bit jar, don't expect a large hot throw unless I guess you have a very spectacular wax because the wax that I purchased like is brand new. It's been used in the candle game for years with big retailers. So that was one of the few reasons why I got it. So I put a lot of faith into it and I do smell it. I do smell it in my room and whatnot, uh, especially if I put it in the bathroom. So right now, um, I, I, but yeah, I think I'm going to take the initiative and start selling, but also say that it's perfect in smaller rooms, not under a vent, but perfect in small rooms and um, bathrooms. So yeah, but I do, I do plan on working on bigger sizes and double and triple wicking. I do plan on doing that in the near future. So hopefully I can either get a job and start working on that, start another business and start working on that, you know, the income to, you know, invest in this business or um, just sell enough to uh, be able to invest back into this business and then start that next collection and see how this goes. And when I continue to learn and to work on it. So, yeah. And also people smell different too. And I've had COVID before, so maybe my smell just isn't as strong anymore like it used to be. I don't know, there could be a plethora of things, but um, just like when we were in my boyfriend's room, I was testing one of my candles out. I think it was with my other wax though. And uh, he said he didn't really smell it. I smelled it when his mother and his brother walked in, they smelled it. So I don't know, but I smelled it, but it was a little, I did get what he was saying. At first he said he smelled it, but it wasn't strong. I smelled it, but it wasn't strong. And granted, he does have a bigger room than mine and he has a bigger like room and whatnot. And, and of course, like you smell it once you enter the room, but once you sit in there for a while, I think you don't really smell it as much. But you know, to be frank, it was like a bigger room in general so yeah it's very much for smaller spaces so and like i said i'm gonna go test this inside of the bathroom and yeah it's doing that right now but that's because i didn't really trim it that well i trimmed it because uh these type of wigs they mushroom so i trimmed it and uh and i lit it and as you can see you can see i didn't trim it the way i just i just pulled it with my fingers and went out with the little napkin you know, be careful with that. But yeah, so it should die down. And I also could just blow it out and then like reclip it with my clippers and then do it that way and whatnot. But it should die down, hopefully. So it only soots if you obviously, you know, do not trim your wig like I didn't do properly. Trim it. And there we go. Let's wait a little bit. It's not doing it nearly as much. Grand the air is on, but it's not doing it nearly as much. And as you can see, I trimmed it with my actual like nail clippers. These right there that I bought specifically for candle making. And yeah, so neither candle I have made has had uh, soot like on the jar on the walls or anything and i mean you wouldn't be able to see it anyway because also it's like a, it's a black jar but um even if it may like smoke or whatever it doesn't soot and even if it continues sooting i mean even though even if it continues smoking you don't get that in the jar or on the glass or on the wax itself either so yeah okay so i'm gonna walk this in the bathroom and i'm gonna sit it where this is so hold on okay and move that out the way put it right there and boom.
and this may be the perfect wick. There's a little milk pool there. It's been three hours. It is currently 10 o'clock. You see, as you can see, there's some wets hang up on the side there. And there's no soot on the walls. It is dirty, but <laughs> it is dirty. But you've seen that before. There's, there's no soot. I need to actually clean those. But look, it's not too deep. You can still see like the little wax up under it. The wet, uh, the wick does mushroom though. I will say that, but that's what LX wicks do. So I just blew it out, and as you can see, just another quick little look. I gotta trim the wick, and I'll probably do that later. But for now, I'm going to just top it and put it over here to cool, and then I'll burn it for another three hours. I fixed the camera. Go ahead, and got some tape. Just got a little piece. Okay, so first I'm gonna get some packing peanuts. And I have a lot of packing peanuts in general and a lot that are uh, recycled. So I'll put some right here. Obviously, it won't look like this exactly. This is just some recycled uh, thermal wrap that I had for my wax melts, but I stopped selling those. Actually, never really sold them. Um, cause I, I just wasn't happy with the outcome, and it it just wasn't doing what I wanted to do. So I stopped. But I'm using these, and it's some bubble wrap. So I'm just gonna put it in there, and then cover it with some more packet peanuts. Okay. Oh yeah, and I have some like back black string that I had when I was selling those wax melts. I had bought some gift boxes for the bubble candles because I hopped on a bubble candle trend. And y'all do not hop on trends. Like, let me just Yeah, I don't hop on trends. I hopped on the bubble candle trend and whatnot. And I did it uh and then I got inspired to do wax melts. So I did the bubble candle wax melts in which I Actually, I was finna lie. I was finna say I had those. Up. I think I threw them away to save space because I figured, like, I don't have, like, an audience. So, it won't be easy to, like, sell them to anyone. As y'all can see, like, all my shipping stuff in my closet back there. But, yeah. Don't hop on trends unless it's something that you see yourself doing for in the long run. I mean, thank God I did it because now I'm in the candle business now. And so, you know, I just kept growing and progressing. I started with lip gloss. It wasn't turning out how I wanted it to. So, now... At some point, I do want to start doing lip gloss and lipstick again, but I won't be making it. I'll like, I'll uh, buy buy for somebody wholesale and do it that way because I do like lip gloss. I do like matte uh, liquid lips and stuff like that. Um, and I do want to sell it, sell it at some point. But I don't want to make it. It's very messy, and then it was just so hard to get it pigmented. It just that was just a no for me. But then I went to you know candles working with soy wax. Believed all the soy lies. I hated the soy wax. Stop using soy. Now I use paraffin. Um, and now I'm on like regular candles. But I'm going to go back and show y'all this. But, you know, that was just to say, don't hop on trends and listen to something that you really want to do. Because one, I never saw myself making candles anyway. But the fact that I hopped on bubble candles just because I knew it was trending at that point. And it's just like, oh, people are going to buy from me because, you know, like it's trending. Let me just hop on that trend. Don't hop on trends unless it's something that you really want to do. So. Okay, so we have it here. I got these boxes from Walmart. Y'all, these are some really cheap boxes because I was looking for some boxes because, like, yeah, I have, like, USPS, but they are very expensive to ship with. And I don't suggest you shipping with them unless you necessarily, like, have to and just because it's a free box, you know? Just because it's free doesn't mean it's better because it costs you... Well, it really costs your customer a lot more in shipping. So... That's going to just draw the price up and then people are just going to probably be upset at that. Certain people maybe. But um, but yeah, I found these boxes. They are 6x6x6. Six by six by six. I rebuke it in the name of Jesus. Amen. But that's the size of the box and whatnot. And they were pretty cheap. Uh, I got, I think, I forgot how many. But I want to say like 10, maybe 15 to 20 for like $10. And I think 60 cents. So yeah. No, I feel like I think I got like 25 of them. 
I think they're around like 50 to maybe 60 cent a piece. Because the way I said it, it's like it's a dollar a piece. It's not. I think it was around like $10. And I got like a pack of like 20 to 15. I'm not sure. I don't remember exactly. Um, I have it in my things. I'll probably show y'all later. But just take my word. These are uh, inexpensive. You can go and look on the side and even see that for yourself. But I have it right here. It's a small, cute box. Because it's like I was in like a chokehold for like shipping products and whatnot. And it's just like that type of stuff is so expensive. And I had already had a budget for everything else. So I didn't want to spend that much more for like boxes either. So And it is, and just know y'all, when y'all making candles, candles are heavy. So the jar, because not only are you, are you, do you have a, um, a seven ounce candle or a 10 or 12 ounce candle, but you also have to consider the box and not even that you have to consider the jar that it's in jars and leaves are heavy. So that just adds on to it. So you'll be surprised if you can get your uh product to be under a pound, but it is a pound and 3.8 ounces i did this before but with my first etsy shop i never opened it but i had it to um you know for the future when i was going to uh open it and i was getting it uh right seeing if i even want to use it because i know they're they're it's cheaper like per month to use than a regular site but what it gets you is those fees they literally take 9.5 percent per sale with a added on interest of uh or a fee of uh 45 cents i can go into detail on that if y'all want a video on that but yeah so but right now it'll be the cheapest option for me to do and so now this is why i'm doing this actually because um it giving me this i can put the information in here and why not so it can tell me the amount of shipping and with that like i was telling y'all since they take that much like right here so this is the transaction fee they charge you 6.5 percent plus 20 cent uh over the total sale plus your shipping so if so my counter costs 18 right so that would be plus the shipping that it tells me down here is not including tax so it'd be 6.5 percent plus 20 cent of um your total sale and shipping now, of the total uh, sale, shipping, and tax, it'll be 3% and $0.25. Cent. So, that's why I have it like this. So, this one is just my total in general. This one is the price, like I said, and the shipping, no tax. And that'll be what this total is. And then every time, 6.5%, uh, it'll give me that. I add on $0.20, cent, and that gives me the total fee that they'll be taking from me. Um, vice versa, it, with this as well, this is the price shipping and tax that'll give me the uh, price which is the same as this essentially um but that's what that is a total and that'll be times three percent because this is the uh, payment processing fee so it makes sense that they charge you a payment processing fee for the whole total thing including the tax because using their etsy processing they took that whole amount not just excluding that if that makes sense but yeah like i said like same thing for this um, 3% of whatever this is gives me this plus 25%. So this and this will be here. So this that fee and uh, another fee. So basically these will be added up, these totals, and it'll be here. My cost of goods will go here. The price of my candle will go here, and this will be my profit. So basically cost of goods plus fees minus um the candle price that i'm selling for equals my profit so yeah if y'all want a video on that i can do one on cost of goods but yeah so i'm just going to enter it in right here one and we're just going to round it up to four and that gives me nine dollars and 12 cents to ship granted um it does give like usps there and i only give that as an option just because um I only give that as an option just because uh i have usps as an option and the only reason why i have that honestly is because at some point like only like one maybe two candles can fit in this box and if someone orders two or three or four i have the usps box i don't have like those 
And even if I did at some point, shipping that many candles in my own box will cost me more than shipping with USPS, which is why a lot of people use it um, for like bigger shipments is because you could pay $12 with your own box, but maybe $9 with them because it's like flat rate. Um, they're small, like cute boxes isn't flat rate though. It's just like this box, but it does cost more because you're shipping through them. Um, and another box, uh, could be flat rate, like they're medium and they're large and international, even though it does, uh, depend on your region and like the region that you're shipping to could determine the cost as well. But generally it's around like $6.95, I believe. Uh, I think that's for either the uh, bubble mailers or the medium flat rate. I think the medium flat rate may be maybe like eight dollars or maybe seven. And I know one of them is like six dollars. And I think ninety five cent. Whatever I just said. But yeah, so it costs more in the long run. But if anything, since it's nine dollars in general, honestly, I might as well just use USPS uh, free boxes because if it starts around like six. To like eight dollars, and that's nine dollars for my own box. I might as well use that. So I'm actually probably gonna go look up on that and why not as well to go see. I might as well just use that box. So hey, remember that I don't think I finished explaining uh what this was from these little uh black strings that I have. So when I was doing a whole bubble candle thing, uh I bought some gift boxes and they came with these. I didn't want it because it's just extra labor. Um and I didn't like the look of that. I wanted my black box with my craft label on top with my black font and whatnot but it came with this and i was like um i really have no purpose even now like i don't even have a purpose for those boxes i think i threw them away yeah because i'm extra so when i'm bored i go doing stuff so i pre-label all of them so now i can't really use them unless i cover up the label which i could have i could just cover it up or uh tore it off for air or something but i still had to cover it up so i think i threw them away but regardless i saved these and what I said, I had no use for them. And I was like, you know, I might as well use it for something. So I cut them up into shreds and I put them inside of my, um, you may see a few. I put them inside of my packing peanuts. Uh, you don't see as much on this, in this box. I think it's in one of my other boxes. It's in one of my other boxes. Um, but I was just like, why not? Because it's one of my brand colors. So why not put some black strings inside of the bubble, um, inside of the packing peanuts might as well like to you know judge it up a little bit so yeah so i just blew this one out in the bathroom after it's been burning from 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 4 30 to 7 30 so it's been going for about three hours and look at that full melt pool but not too deep so obviously this is um the perfect wick for this scent and wax combination and jar size okay it is currently 11. so as you can see it definitely needs to be trimmed but as you can see there's also no uh you know soot it is smoking but that's because it's been burning for uh three hours and i'm gonna let it burn for another hour because one of those burns i only burned it for two so i'm just gonna let it for burn, burn for another uh hour Look at the milk pool. It's not too deep. It does need to be trimmed, but it does smell good in here. Uh, and now it's 12, so it's been burning for four hours. You can see flames going crazy. Wick is a bit long. So obviously it needs to be trimmed. So y'all please trim y'all wicks. But also uh the fan, the air is on too, so that could uh have something to do with it. So I'm gonna take it out of the bathroom. Be mindful because it's hot. I'm gonna put it there and then I'm gonna blow it out. Because I'm trying to see how it is like when it's not under the air. Yeah, because the flame is really tall. So, y'all, please trim y'all wicks. It's how tall up the flame gets when it is not trimmed. And you see how, um, you see how deep the milk pool is right there? Is it, it has been four hours, so that's why that makes sense. And again, and it's getting deeper in the jar. But the flame is also like really big. So y'all please trim y'all wigs in between every few hours. I'm gonna finish this one out. And it has been burning since 12 a.m. So it's been four hours. And that is my 
fifth burn. Well, I just did the math on that. And currently at the five burns of three hours a piece, it has 15 hours on it. So, um, and it's not even halfway down the jar yet. So you should get about 20, maybe 25 plus burn time on this candle if you burn it correctly. And please trim your wicks. It is 5.30. What I will what I will say is that I am kind of concerned with the flame does get a bit high. Jar is hot too. Um, so what I will say is that, you know, you can pick it up from like where it's not hot at. I would think any hot, any jar would be hot. Um, yeah. I, it could use um, a wick down maybe. I may try that and see, uh, but it does smell good uh, within this bathroom. I will say that, and it is currently, like I said, 530. And I realize at least it doesn't smoke like terribly. You can see it like, you know, better on the camera, but at least it does it like every few seconds. And it's not just like a constant flame. It is six o'clock. And to add to that, um, since I've been testing this one, I do see, cause I've already tested, uh, other, other of my, uh, candles, even with the other wax in the bathroom. So it would definitely be for bathrooms, especially, but also small rooms, even though I would prefer you to use them in a small, um, bathroom. So, uh, yeah, I just want to add that. I feel like I forgot to put that in here. So as I've been testing, I've been testing in the bathroom and it works perfectly in the bathroom. So yeah, cause it's small enough to do that. So, uh, next video or maybe even here, I'm just gonna, you know, explain how, like I do at some point want to get the bigger jars. I don't know why when I had the money, when I was getting the money in, in the first place to even buy my supplies, I don't know why I just didn't think of doing the bigger size first. I guess I didn't realize how much that would affect the hot throw and how bad it will like lower the tone to where of of the scent to where I uh can't suggest you use it in a living room or a house setting so I don't know why I didn't think of that I may maybe because I just didn't know I was ignorant to the fact but now I know I should have definitely purchased those but you know um we're here it's still a blessing um people I'm sure will still purchase it and why not it's just um it's just, you know, disheartening the fact that, you know, I can only suggest you use it in a bathroom or in a small bedroom and whatnot, you know, even if that. So that's kind of disheartening. You know, people expect a big hot throw um, and to be able to burn it wherever they want. And I want to be able to give that to you. I want to be able to do that myself. So I'm definitely going to invest in that. But for right now, I just got to be happy with where I'm at. Um, and continue to build, of course, and, you know, get those jars and then work on that. So you will be able to do that at some point. But I just want to, you know, add that in here. Okay. So I just blew out. Y'all can see my hair. I tried something. Oh, uh, it didn't go exactly. It didn't go exactly how I wanted it to go. Let me see my little bun on top. Uh, it doesn't look exactly how I want it because I want this to be a bit more curly, but I have like uh, a flat iron for like a barrel curl, like a fat flat iron. So I wasn't going to probably get the curl that I wanted up here because it's probably not long enough for that fat flat iron. I think it's like three inches. So yeah, I'll try something different, but uh, I had the candle burning in a bathroom from 4 to 6 30 i got to it late because i was getting ready and whatnot to go see my boyfriend and stuff but i was getting ready so i blew it out at around like 6 30 so that is its official six burn and then tomorrow i probably get a burn in i don't know because it'll be saturday and then i leave around like three or four you know maybe hopefully so i probably won't burn it uh for long but yeah, the only thing uh, that I have found out from testing is that the only thing that concerns me is the, um, what's it called? The flame height and how it flickers a bit. But uh, doing my research, I saw that they said it can do that if the um, wick is a little bit off center, in which the wick is off center, I believe. Um, like the, the further it has burned down, it seems to be a bit off center. It seems to be leaning towards more, I believe, the left side or bottom left side. 
Um, so it's not burning as evenly, but it doesn't tunnel. So I think with this wax and then maybe the, the wick is like good enough or close enough or just because it's paraffin wax. So it has a lower melt point anyway. I think that just causes it to uh, not tunnel and still be able to burn down and then, uh, you know, center itself out and whatnot. And then the longer it burns, it'll probably, you know, get a full melt pool. But it does generally get a full melt pool, but it's so closer to one side. One side has a bit of a residue on the uh, other side. So, yeah, the only thing that I would be concerned with is the fact of, um, yeah, so the only thing I would be concerned with is the flame height. Um, because that seems like it's kind of, um, not worrisome. It's just a bit, I don't know how to explain it. But the only thing I would look at is the, definitely the flame height. Uh, and I think that's it. Other than that, nothing. So... I am going to end this uh, video here. I did have it as 40 minutes, but I just decided because I remembered the whole purpose of this video was for me to uh, do whatever I was doing, but also test that one specific count in which I realized I didn't show y'all much of that. So I'm going to try to fill that out some um, because I made another candle because I made another candle and I put it in this one and I was like, that's a whole separate uh, vlog. I'm going to separate it off and then make that into two. So I'm going to end this one off. So like, comment, and subscribe. Follow me on all my social medias. And if you are a uh, fellow candle maker and you're trying to get into it or you need some supplies, look in my description box. Um, as I am an Amazon affiliate, some of those links or most of those links are... Um, or affiliate links but those are products that i use or will be using once i upgrade to them and grow to them because those ones in my list are the things that i want to buy myself so if you need anything go uh, in my um description box and click on some stuff and get you some stuff um but yeah and also follow me on my instagram at destiny hope candles and wholesale and uh hopefully you enjoy these videos i've been uploading back to back i just uploaded um three vlogs and i have uh two now so this one and then the next one that i uh have already started on basically and this is what i gotta split it up so hopefully y'all enjoying the content thank y'all for you know watching i'm seeing my views are in the double digits now so i know it's not much but it's something and thank you to whoever is always liking my videos i see like one like on all of my videos so thank you for um to whoever that is Thank you.